Let me go to Mark Faber in, in uh, Budapest. Mark, I heard you uh, say that you now believe it is 100% guaranteed that we are going to have hyperinflation like Zimbabwe. Yes, that's correct. And if we destroy our currency, which is what the Obama plan might do, if we have hyperinflation, it's not going to matter how much money we have because we're not going to be able to buy anything with it. Well, Adrian, when you print gigantic amounts of money and you flood the world with money, throughout history, that has led to inflation. If you're worried about $4 a gallon of gasoline, you better worry about $8 a gallon of gasoline. Uh, the problem is we have a printing press. We can pay our debts by printing money. People think that hyperinflation can't happen here. Well, you know, the laws of physics works everywhere. If you throw a ball up in the air in Zimbabwe, gravity is going to bring it back down. You can't print money, phantom money out of thin air based on nothing and producing practically nothing without causing the dollar to devalue dramatically. That's not deflation, that's temporary. Quantitative easing is inflation. but they're going to blow us all up. So my question to you is, will you tell the American people to whom you lent 2.2 trillion of their dollars, will you tell us who got that money and what the terms are of those agreements? No. Inflation, simply explained, is the printing of money. Inflation is the value of the money in your pocket going down, while prices all around you rise. When gas prices rise, when your grocery bills go up, this is a symptom of inflation. The Federal Reserve is printing money out of thin air every day. If you have money in the bank, that money is decreasing in value. In other words, we should all be worried about inflation because it affects the prices of everything you use on a daily basis. There have been good men warning us for years about inflation. Jim Rogers, Peter Schiff, Mark Faber, Ron Paul, and many others. They have spoken about the uncontrollable spending that will lead to the total collapse of the United States. And then there have been those in power who have ignored the warnings, George W. Bush, Ben Bernanke, Timothy Geithner, Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, and all of Congress. We will show you how these individuals, through stimulus plans, bailouts, low interest rates, and the ever-expanding balance sheet of the Federal Reserve, will lead to the destruction of the U.S. currency. We owe the world probably as much, if not more, than Germany owed. Only we didn't incur this debt fighting a war. We incurred it remodeling our houses and buying cars and television sets and, and iPods and all these little gadgets that we didn't need. And now we owe the world trillions and we're reaching for the printing press to pay it back. Never before in world history were people able to buy houses with no money down. Many people bought four or five houses with no money down and no job. And then they did it with cars and student loans and credit card loans. You think we just say, well, that's too bad, we're going to start over, nobody loses his job? Be realistic. We have to realize that the monetary base, the liquidity was doubled in a few short months. To me, there's a lot of inflation out there. It's already inflated. We're in the midst of inflation because the prices haven't gone up. doesn't mean we don't have the distortion. And it was, it was that system that gave us the financial bubble, the artificially low interest rates, the malinvestment, all the mistakes made. And now we're trying to correct all that by doing the very, very same thing. This system that we've had since 1971 is non-viable and it's coming to an end. That's what this whole story is about. Bush's $152 billion Economic Stimulus Act of 2008 sent $300 to $600 checks to individuals and $600 to $1,200 checks to married couples. When the checks started to arrive, oil prices surged to $147 per barrel. Americans needed the checks just to buy gas. Obama is taking Bush's mistakes and making them bigger. While Bush's stimulus was a direct injection of inflation, Obama's will take a while to work its way through the system, as pork projects will take years to be completed but the long-term effects will be many times worse.
the Obama budget deficits, I mean, they dwarf anything that, uh, that Bush had. I mean, it's ironic that Obama is now trying to criticize Bush for running up the deficit as he's running it up through the roof, $2 trillion uh, in his first term. And he's saying, well, I'm going to cut it in half by my last year. Well, even if he's right, it's still going to be a trillion when he cuts it in half. It's still more than twice uh, the last budget deficit from, from Bush. In an attempt to reinflate the dot-com bubble, Alan Greenspan lowered interest rates from 6.5% in 2000 down to 1% in 2003. Greenspan did not reinflate the dot-com bubble, but instead created an unprecedented rise in real estate prices. Now, in an attempt to reinflate the real estate bubble, Ben Bernanke has lowered interest rates from 5.25% in June of 2006 to their current level of zero percent. Tell me, what is the worst case scenario? So we have so many economists coming on our air and saying, oh, this is a bubble and it's going to burst and this is going to be a real issue for the economy. Some say it could even cause a recession at some point. What is the worst case scenario if, in fact, we were to see prices come down substantially across the country? Well, I guess I don't buy your premise. It's a pretty unlikely possibility. We've never had a decline in house prices on a nationwide, nationwide basis. So what I think is more likely is that house prices will slow, maybe stabilize, might slow consumption spending a bit. I don't think it's going to drive the economy too far from its full employment path, though. The motor vehicle sector may already be showing signs of strengthening. After having cut production significantly in recent months, in response to the rise in the inventory of unsold vehicles, automakers appear to have boosted the assembly rate a bit in November, and they have scheduled further increases for December. There's not much indication at this point that subprime mortgage issues have spread into uh, the broader mortgage market, which still seems to be healthy, um, and the lending uh, side of that still seems to be healthy. I'm hopeful that, and I'm confident, in fact, that the uh, bank regulators will, will pay close attention to the kinds of loans that are being made. Confident the bank regulators will pay close attention to the kind of loans being made? Come on, Ben. How could you have confidence when the industry was pushing ads like this? It, that's not the point. What is the point? What? I love that house. Plus the schools. The kids are three and one. They're going to grow up. What? Suzanne, research this. This listing is special, John. You guys can do this. We can do this. Okay. Are you kidding me? This is awesome. See the size of that garage? Yes. Oh, that's great. Now let me get to work. And it wasn't just Ben Bernanke's incompetence. Congress did its part, too. The only way they can pass this bill is by creating and sustaining a panic atmosphere. That atmosphere is not justified. Many of us were told in private conversations that if we voted against this bill on Monday, that the sky would fall, the market would drop two or three thousand points the first day, another couple thousand the second day, and a few members were even told that there would be martial law in America if we voted no. That's what I call fear-mongering. Unjustified. Proven wrong. We've got a week, we've got two weeks to write a good bill. The only way to write, to pass a bad bill, keep the panic pressure on. 1,100 pages, not, not one member of this body has read. Not one. There may be some staffer over in the Appropriations Committee that read all of this last night. I don't know how you could read 1,100 pages between midnight uh, and now. Not one member's read this. What happened to the promise that we're going to let the American people see what's in this bill for 48 hours? But nope, we don't have time to do that.